podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a dating game with Colonel Sanders in it. Whoa. Yeah, so we're going to be, we're in for a treat here today. This, uh, this game, I heard about it recently, and I was immediately like, what? <laughs> You're kidding. So I had to look it up. Uh, this game apparently came out one year ago today. Uh, it came out on the 24th of September, so I decided to play it. Uh, it's generally, usually horror month on the channel right now. I don't understand what I'm seeing. Uh, September and October are usually horror months, but I decided to play this. It's kind of scary looking. It, it looks horrific, so I, I don't know anything about this. I just know, uh, I think all I need to know <laughs> based on this image and the title. Um, I, I have never really played a... I think this is a dating sim. I've never really played one, so this is gonna be interesting to see. Um, I, the only one I've ever played before is Doki Doki Literature Club, and that's not really a good example of a dating sim, <laughs> for obvious reasons. So, I'm gonna jump into this. I'm excited for it. I don't know what to expect. Uh, tell us your name, of course. Our name will be Link. <laughs> if you've seen any other video on this channel, you'll know why. Hey, look! We got the biscuits. We got the, the the breaded chicken, the fried chicken. It's so delicious. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. <laughs> Both. You could stay in that moment forever. Or you could wake up. Now, now, now. Ah, ah, ah. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep then. All right, shut up. Uh, should we smack the clock up and at him? Or should we throw the clock out the window and stay in bed forever? Hell yes, dude. You slept through the school year and gave up on the once-of-a-lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. Whoops. Ruined it already. I am starting off on the wrong foot, it seems. Game over! Already? You might not be cut out for this. I give up. Well, that's it for me. Alright, so thank you for watching uh, Colonel Sanders game. I love you, Colonel Sanders. Tune in. Right now for more. We're gonna go back in. We're doing it again. Psyop Productions. Cool. So I feel like we need to take some notes in the last about what just happened. We definitely messed up somewhere. I think if we retrace our steps, we'll be able to find where we went wrong. So why don't we just go ahead and uh alright, well, this is the second link, so we gotta be linked to, obviously. Good. Alright, so starting off on the wrong foot, that's fine. We we just need to be better. All right, so by the way, up here in the upper left corner, I'm probably not gonna show it because this is where my face is gonna be. There's a box or bag, a bucket of, I would initially assume this to be popcorn, just based on me loving popcorn and movies and stuff, but it's probably a chicken box, chicken bucket. It's the menu, okay. So that's gonna be always there behind my beautiful and delicious face. So just know that it's there. Okay, wait. We gotta hear this, we gotta feel this, we gotta experience the moment. Oh, I clicked! I'm sorry! Smack that clock! Up and at him! We're ready to go! I'm ready to go! Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. What a name this is. Your mind begins to wonder. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by. Much like a beautiful little butterfly shifting on the wings. Butter like you would put on chicken. I guess it would be probably easier to have said fly like a chicken. Wait, chickens don't fly. So then I wouldn't have been able to say that. I didn't mess up. And you find your imagination getting away from you. Get it back! You'll need to take this seriously or you will allow yourself to dra- da you allow yourself to daydream a bit, thinking about the future. Well, now I'm worried that uh, this is actually gonna matter because if I lost by that decision at the beginning, uh, I'll, I'll allow myself to daydream just a little bit, not too much. I'm not gonna miss out on the whole school year again. That was a mistake. That was bad. It's finally here, or it's here, finally, your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare, so many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late! You grab a biscuit and burst out the door in a hurry! Where am I keeping that biscuit? Under my pillow? Ah, the dreaded biscuit- pillow biscuits of 2020. Oh my god! 
Mmm, delicious. Just what you needed to wake up those taste buds. Okay, now, b I, I think the idea here is the green is, like, glowing because it's magic. It's it's heavenly. It's ethereal. It's wonderful. And it's steaming because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's hot and delicious. And I like all of these things individually, but the issue is that seeing, like, green smoke rise up from it, it kind of looks like that. It just makes me think that it's, like, smells bad or something, so... I don't know about this. I don't know about this biscuit. I'm a little suspect of it. I'm a little sus. Uh, all right, well... Yikes, you're in such a hurry! In fact, that you forgot to put on any deodorant before running out the door. I was right about the stinky. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Buckets of chicken? What's your favorite KFC food? Leave it in the comments below. I love popcorn chicken. There's nothing better in this world to me than just being able to reach my grubby little fists into a bucket and pull out just a handful of just chicken balls and just shovel them into my mouth. It's the best, because then I don't have to worry about like gross bones or anything. Gross, disgusting bones. Even if you get like a large thing of, like chicken tenders I like too, chicken wings, um, if they're boneless, you know? I, I love those too because you could just eat them, but those at least require you to either pick up and consume one at a time. I mean, I guess you could theoretically shove an entire chicken wing into your mouth, but that's not kosher, I would say. Well, I don't know if any anything about chicken is kosher. I actually don't know what kosher means. Why don't we just move on? Yikes. All oh, right, I read this. Let's keep going. Standing the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School. Academy for Learning. Great. I love to be here. Here comes your best lifelong friend, best forever, Miriam. Hi, Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met. Is she adorkable, though? And you absolutely love her for it, Miriam says. Good morning, Link 2. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Gotta give these characters voices. Also, I want to try to do this all in one mega episode, which means I gotta do voices that I can actually do for two hours. Because when I looked it up on howlongtobeat.com, it said about two hours. So, I'm gonna, it's gonna take longer because I keep stopping and talking, but... Good morning, Lee 2. Are you excited for that? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Ex oh, this is me. Actually, I'm... Because I sure am excited. A little nervous. Okay. A lot nervous. What's the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam, raised by Master Chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're gonna do great. You're gonna do better. Hey, right. but with the university cook with with the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three-day only semesters, what? Really? Why? What's the point? Three days? Are you serious? Okay, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. A sweet girl, Miriam, has always had to flare for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped the tooth practicing on a mannequin. Gross, weird, ouch. In that order. Uh, should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Uh-oh. I'm not good at decisions, so if there's a lot of those in this game, it's gonna be a issue for me. Hmm, I'm gonna say pep talk my best friend, right? Because I feel like I want her to feel better. But I don't want to give her some relief. Because that wouldn't be in the theme of things. I'll say pep talk. Okay. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? Or is it tarot? It seems like it should be tarot. But also roulette. She seems like it should be roulette. So I don't know what the rules are. The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget her. Was it Kaith from Game of Thrones? Dude, remember when Kaith was in Game of Thrones and it didn't matter? Remember when Game of Thrones was good? I know she looked spooky, but she was so sweet and buttery and delicious, what? And she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower and that other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I'm not wearing a suit. I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. Perhaps a colonel? Perhaps one of the Sanders family clan? And I'm sure you will soon. In no time, we'll be graduating. And you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking. In no time at all! As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. 
Uh, why are you feeling her nerves, Link 2? That's gross. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. They're okay. Can you believe I cut them myself? Uh, yeah, I can actually. You can definitely believe it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, uh, cannot believe it. Right? I cannot? Yeah, I cannot believe it. Okay. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hand and onto the ground. Hey! Oh, it's Ashley, your arch rival! She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. Uh, hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Link 2's shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins! Ah, oh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add, add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. It's a scientific fact that the more letters are in your name, the more successful you will be. That's why I'm changing my name to Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <clears throat> Does that make sense? I think I mumbled my way through that, but you understood. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us! I pride myself on my shins, so I don't appreciate this. Ashley getting her heart cleavage all up in my face. Or do I? Uh-oh. We're not gonna let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man. Yes! What is this? Van Van the Man Man has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. Oh, are we gonna say anything about his, his, his glutes? Or his shins? Also, she has leggings that have, I think, cutouts of chicken legs on them, and that's very funny to me. Or they're just details, I don't know. <laughs> you rang rang. Uh-oh, this is guy, <laughs> this guy is gonna be a treat, I can already tell. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but uh, as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. Yeah, I should say so. Uh, I can't believe that University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, would ever allow people like you to attend as students. Maybe you could attend as, like, teachers or something. You two, you two are very smart. <laughs> I know, right? You'd think that they'd just hand us our diplomas now. Or maybe hire us on as professors. You amateurs can learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off. So you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Psh, see you later, losers. Uh-oh. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. What are these sounds? What sounds are these? Is it gonna... What is that? What the hell is that? It's Pop. Uh, oopsie, I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Ah, okay. Hi, Pop. I'm Link 2! So, are you gonna make me hold this door all day? Nope! And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Great. Well, I'd say this was a successful interaction. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? Uh, I wouldn't say that. I think it's just you, yeah. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room. What on hell is this? Um, <laughs> this is weird. Hey, this is very nicely drawn out, I gotta say. It's, uh, the, the, the quality of the details are very much of my liking. Got ourselves pi equals 3.14159265359. Important things to know when you're, you know, in a culinary school. Although I guess pi, that makes sense. Uh, actually, this is a good time to take a break because I need to get myself a drink, so pause. And we're back! You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. Hey, when that happens. Oh. My God. Oh my God. What is happening? What is this game? 
What have I stumbled onto? I don't know if I love this or hate it. I, I definitely love it. I mean, that's for sure. But also, good God. A scruffy looking pooch takes his place at a podium at the front of the class. Adorable. Is this the teacher? Is this the professor? Sprinkles! His name is Sprinkles! Oh my god! This is too much for me to handle. I don't think I can contain myself anymore. What the hell? Why is this happening to me? He's standing on a podium! Look! He's literally standing on top of like a Roman podium. <clears throat> All right, what's his name? Now, now, sit down, everyone. Voice, I meant to say. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? He must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Uxal, Uxal, University School. Wait, University College of School. University of Culinary School. Augmented Learning. <laughs> I don't remember. Academy of Learning, right. Uh... Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and a little and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. Get them out. Get rid of them. Ah. My allergies are gonna act. Sure, sure, sure. I sneeze. Uh, Pop says, I'm chilly. Someone close the window. I don't remember if this is the exact voice I gave this character, but let's assume it is. And then he walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's. It is, if it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles, sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Oh no, now I got, what's, what's the voice for him? <clears throat> Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Whew. Wow, okay. Sweat begins to beat across your bow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. Wait, you're looking at me, why? Why not looking at Colonel Sanders? Uh, and this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. Oh no. Maybe we should open that window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. I don't like the name faucet pits at all. Hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. You two know- you two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is with all your really weird insults? Besides- Besides, when Link 2 sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful! Look at that shimmer! Besides- Oh, right, right, right. You turn to find Colonel Sanders standing right in front of you- Ah! Sorry. <laughs> he kind of scared me a little bit there. Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is. Stands before you, smiling gently, his hand outstretched. Ha, ah, this isn't gonna help. I'm gonna be a sweaty boy, for sure. Boy, howdy, this classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. Please, use my handkerchief. I don't think I can handle all this. I don't know why it's flashing like that sometimes, but I'm gonna go ahead and ignore it. You freeze up, Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Just making sure I'm still recording everything. I am. Wait. Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look. You're completely mortified. Ow! Ooh, I just slapped myself in the face on both cheeks. That was a mistake. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? Uh, uh, what is he doing here? Is he offering the handkerchief to me? Or is he just inspecting the interior of his watch? Ah, uh, the craftsmanship of this buckle is... Truly more than I can say. I'm just gonna refuse the handkerchief. I want to downplay the fact that I'm sweaty. What if I tell him that this is just my natural skin? What if I just always look like this? I'll refuse. You feel horrified that your first interaction with Colonel Sanders is centered around the fact that you are a sweaty mess. 
No thanks. This is actually on purpose. It's an old family secret to keeping our skin soft and healthy. You wave his hand away and quickly wipe your face with your apron instead. Ew, that's gross. Professor Dollar steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There will be- Oh, he does say there will be blood. I honestly didn't read that, and I was saying that as a joke, and then immediately looked at the screen and was shocked. There might even be really adorable tiny food. There better be. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. There will, you will lift your sporks and complete in the broom cooking arena. Broom with the knee. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. I don't know how many more voices I have in me, so... Uh-oh. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet, quiet. I don't know, I don't know this voice. Is this too similar to other voices? It might be. Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Yeah, no, I don't like this voice. Hold on, let me think about this for a second. By the way, I don't like his like sickly piano player stance that he has going on here. Maybe I'll lean into that. Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Oh, it's kind of like uh, uh, what the Simpsons dude, the old man. I'm blanking on his name. That guy, you know him. Uh, everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Look at my butt. Look at it. Look how adorable it is. Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable. By the way, I made a reference to the fact that I wanted all of these voices to be easy to do and maintain over a long period of time. And this Corgi's voice is not <laughs> the one for that. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student Sprinkles is referring to, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. What the hell am I looking at right now? Good God, this game keeps throwing things at me that I just can't handle. I need time to process these things, game. Leave these th just stop. Calm down. All right, twerp. Okay, well. Oh, he's cool. He's 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 right there. Awesome. By the way, I don't I don't like how we have the the image of the class. It looks like it's taken from the back, or it's drawn from the back rather, and uh, everybody's standing like in front of the image, so like behind the desks and everything. All the students are like craning back to look. Like, hello, I have a question, professor. It's not a good look. Class bursts into laughter. Why? Because he's a robot? That's rude. Uh, owl clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent disobedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkles' reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? Hey, don't I have that biscuit from before? Hmm, multivitamins. Which of these have vitamins and vitamins in them? Not the rubber ball. You know what? This is KFC game. I feel like chicken snack is the way to go here. Boom. You reach beneath your apron and return with the chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkles his eyes. I'm sorry about that, everyone. Sprinkles his eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite. Yes, I did it. See, I knew it. I knew it. Well, well, well. I think there might be some competition for new star student. The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. Gross! Ew! Why? Why? You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay them no mind. Pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. You know what? I've always said that. 
Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Kill the dog or run for your life. <laughs> hey, Link Hey, Link 2, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. I'm kind of doing a Benoit Blanc from Knives Out for this guy, but not a good one. Although, to be fair, <laughs> there isn't really a good version of that voice. Two good options, but which will you choose? Oh no! Oh, I can either sit by Colonel Sanders or my best friend. Well, I don't know. I don't know what choice to make here. This is a bad, this is a bad choice. Here's my options. I could either sit by Colonel Sanders or sit by my best friend. Those are the two options I have. I feel like I needed to kind of lay those out in the open for everybody. Obviously, the right thing to do would be sitting by my best friend because that's my best friend. But the other right thing to do would be sitting by Colonel Sanders because it's Colonel Sa The name of the game is I love you, Colonel Sanders. But I want to neg him. I want to neg him. I want him to know that he ain't that special. He ain't nothing. He ain't nothing. Colonel Sanders. You move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. Wait, I accidentally did click the Colonel Sanders one. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to click the Colonel Sanders one. I literally meant to click sit by your best friend. I clicked the Colonel Sanders one by accident. Oops, my bad. Well, choice made, I guess. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. Oh, however, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. But don't you have to do, like, tests and stuff? Even if you don't need to take notes, it still seems like you would need to do stuff in the classroom. Thanks for offering me this seat. I'll, I've only had two rules. Do all you can and do it to the best you can. Do it the best you can. It's the only way you ever get that feeling of, an accomplish of accomplishing something. That's so inspiring. A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. What is that announcement? Oh, do I have to click? But my hands are behind my head. What am I to do? Eh. Eh. Oh god, no, I didn't mean to do this. Alright, resume. Can I save, by the way? I don't think so. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. Uh-oh. Yay, a, po a quiz about me. Oh no, pop, it's not a pop quiz. He's literally six years old. What the hell is Miriam going on about being like, he's cute? Well, I guess he's cute in a kid way. I don't, like, I, don't, I don't like what Miriam's going on about. This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you are ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely looking at you, Pop. Yeah, that's right. Wait, why didn't it say that's, why didn't he say that's right? Forest is the tree as tricked as chicken is to, what? What, a slam dunk? Why, why, what? Night fishing, what? Feather, what? Forest is a tree, as chicken is to delicious meat would be the option because it's like forest is made out of trees, chicken is made out of delicious meat. I guess feather, but I also am very curious about these other two options here. I'll just do feather. I don't want to get kicked out of culinary school on day one. That's right, good. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? <laughs> A comically oversized fork. Oh, that's wrong. Oh no. What food is best for a broken, what food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. I like salt. Camel meat. Camel meat? Have I ever had camel? No, why would I even ask that? Obviously not. A pancake that looks like a silly face. Oh, I see a silly face. No, it was wrong. Is Sprinkles a good boy? He's a talking dog that teaches culinary school. He is the best boy! No, the best boy is Dotson the dog. This is our stuffed dog that I got my fiance Jody for her birthday. He's adorable, I think he's a corgi, and his name is Dotson. Moving on. That's right! Your total score is three out of five! Okay! 
I'll take that. That's passing, I think. Is it? Hold on. That's 60%. Um, I believe that is an E, so not great. It's no perfect score, but at least it's not a complete and utter embarrassment. Yeah, well, you catch Colonel Sanders eyeballing your answers. His reaction is hard to read. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Yay! I love lunch. Wow, it's the Stewart Cafeteria, established 2015, okay. I like how, I, I can't tell if these seats are green and blue, or if they're green, but they're in shadows over here. I think that's the case, because they're all green back here. This is very important, I know, so have to establish these things. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. Great. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters, sorry. Do you smell that? It must be our lunch. It smells crazy good, crazy good. No, that's Pop-Tarts, I think. Uh, everyone can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just want to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. A student is talking, Colonel. I don't know if I like this guy all that much. No, I do. I can't. I can't lie. I do like him very much. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers! Yay! I love lunch news. But hey... Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said shush. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You heard that he's very talented. But where the room is true is this. Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Oh, it's beautiful. I feel like I can reach out and crap my berry. But I can't. It's just a video game. <laughs> it's just a video game. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crisp golden finish. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Oh good, you can press spacebar to do that. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept! It's almost like it's the icon that brings up the menu as well. Mm. Also, are these like n tissue, like nap tissue nap paper, Kleenex things on the cafeteria desk, tables? I'm forgetting all kinds of words today. What a novel concept. I said, yup, what a novel concept. I could use a little fuel myself. Your stomach begins to grumble. I should say, stop thinking and start eating. Okay, I will. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. By the way, I don't know if this game is like officially licensed by KFC. It seems like it would almost have to be. I'm not advertised with them, by the way. This is not an advertisement. I just think this game is hilarious. So, I gotta play it. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. You ever see that movie, Forrest Gump? What, do you think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshhh, nah, my dude, nah. I'm just, uh, drafting a last will and testament in case, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison. Got him! He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at a sick burn. Mmm, was it though? Was it a sick burn? You wait to see what Zinger Ashley is prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, I was just, like, writing in my diary. Trying to make this voice different from the Patrick Warburton voice that my character has? You understand. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. 
How would I know that? This game is reading a lot into her whatever. Anyway, moving on. Oh, please. Well, Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any, I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I Wait, whoa, hold on. Hold on, I mean, I guess I'll try it. This is very hard. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now, there is enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates. My, my fellow classmates. <laughs> Wait, is this right? Yeah, it is, okay. I, I think a lot of presidents do this thing, like the remote pointing, you know, like, ch -ch -ch. I feel like that's a JFK thing and a Bill Clinton thing, and I don't understand it. Uh, okay, you take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing! I imagine so, okay? We're in space. We've gone to space. You know what? I love it here. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Or swim towards the light. Will I die if I do this? What do you mean swim towards the light? I want to do that. Somewhere up ahead, a bright light beckons you. The flavors are so intense, you become wrapped up in them. Unable to resist, you reach toward the light. It grabs your hand and pulls you closer, closer, until your fingertip connects until your fingertip connects with the end of everything. You are forever lost in the land of tender fried chicken bliss. Your mind dissolves. There is no Link 2 now. There is only herbs and spices. What have I done? Oops, though Miriam tries to revive you, she cannot. I died. Oops. Oh no, I lost. How? I died because I ate the chicken and it was too delicious. <laughs> this game is incredible. This is incredible. Wow. Try again. Okay. Great. Well, I, I, I think we can do better than that this time. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Okay, let's get back there. Tasting Colonel Sanders food transports you to an- Transports you to another dimension. That's not Patrick Orburton, that's Rod S S Serling? Sterling? I don't remember. Alone with the taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Let's this time savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' heart. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? Yes, in fact they are. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders, great. I don't know why that needs to be like a choice box or whatever. Colonel Sanders looks you up and down as you approach. It's impossible to read his mood, but you press on anyway. Colonel, I wonder if I could talk to you for a second. I'm madly in love with you, Colonel. Let's run away together. Let's take the dog with us. We'll run off with the dog. It'll just be you and me, Colonel Sanders. Only the two of us and the dog. <clears throat> anyway, can I get carried away there? Colonel Sanders sits silently. You suppose he didn't say no, so you press forward. What exactly was on that chicken? Did you transport me to the cosmos beyond the planes of knowledge? Because if you did, I should be very upset. Ha 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 ha! How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea- Whoa, okay, where did that come from? Colonel, where were you hiding that thing? He was not holding onto that earlier. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. <laughs> It's just you and me are here talking. I could keep a secret. Oh, it's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'm willing to. I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. <laughs> yeah, I forgot this is only a three-day semester. He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be a per to be persistent. 
You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Secrets, secrets, hurt someone! Secret secrets hurt better. Aww. You've got Moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways. To make sure you're truly alone. Then he leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can tell you can't tell. I use redacted. It's something my great grandmother taught me. Uh okay. I don't even know how to Wow! You never had you never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. Uh-oh. What could it be? Is it cocaine? Probably. Yeah. Well, you're wrapped up in that huge revelation. You notice that Colonel Sandals has dis Sandals has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decided to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I'm graduated. As a wise man once said, you have no control. Who lives, who dies, and who goes to sleep for a million years, never to wake up. It sounds like you have, oh, it sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Bet on, as another wise man once said, bet on it, bet on it. You can bet on me. I love High School Musical. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Um, don't just whip out your personality. That would be problematic, to be sure. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Mmm, okay. Be modest but thoughtful. Neg him to show your own strength. Um, I don't know that that's a good idea. Although I did try not to sit next to him earlier. That's awkward. <clears throat> I feel like if I wow him with a big idea, I, it just seems like he'll be mad at that. He wouldn't, he wouldn't like that so much because, I don't know, I'm intruding in his territory. And what does Walter White always say about territory? Stay out of my territory. Yeah, so... I don't know about that. Be modest but thoughtful. That seems right. Oh, it worked, I think! See those weird hearts that just floated out? Or were those just petals from the... What is this, a cherry tree? Probably not. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. <laughs> you have my attention. And now you can curiosity having be Memes, you guys. The flavors were complex, but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery. It was perfect. It was... better. <laughs> I appreciate the compliment, <clears throat> Link, too. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the feel the same feeling about you. What? I haven't done anything to demonstrate that I'd be a good chef. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon, and the next break also starts right now. Bam! All right. You step into the mat. Whoa! You step into the massive cooking arena where all the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. That's pretty cool. Looks like there's only uh, two little areas here. They all have different stuff, so hopefully everybody's like. I think in game shows they like prepare specific ingredients around for different dishes and stuff. Game shows, cooking shows, you know? So maybe that's what's going on here. Well, this this looks really cool. It looks really well stocked. You know, my college experience was not like this. Every lab that we had to do, there was like one thing that everybody had to gather around instead of all working on individually. And uh, most of the time it was broken. So this seems like a huge step up. Also, why is the oven on the other side of this island that you're in here? You'd have to, like, get out, go around, put it in the oven. Maybe that's better. I don't know. I'm no cook. I'm no chef. I'm no chef boyardee. Actually, I am a chef boyardee. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh, no. We have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? What if I get arrested? Um, you're not going to blow anything. <laughs> We'll see about that. Except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. 
Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Oh, plot twist, I'm a cat. You couldn't fool me. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? Oh, she's sad and she's still doing the, the pose. That's funny. That's very funny. Uh, a team of two, that is. Me and you. If that wasn't clear, yeah, I got it. Want to be my partner? And also do the cooking competition together? Sure, I'll link to. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Oh, no! Hello, new partner. Beep boop. Uh-oh. Oh, my! Two potential partners? I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Oh, it looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you'll pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Mir Miriam's partner? Oh, no! By the way, I like how Clank the robot doesn't have arms, so the 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 the, the chef uniform, whatever you call it, is, is just draped around him, and the arms are just hanging there. This game is very funny. And obviously we have to go with Clank. Wait, actually, no! Uh-oh! That was a mistake, though! Because she liked Pop. She thought he was cute, remember? But yeah, maybe she's to stay away from Pop if she thinks he's cute. Uh, sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. Okay. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. Uh-oh. Get out of there! It's gonna blow! Hold on there, fella! We don't even know the assignment yet! Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Yeah, there is. Bzzzt! Tissue? I hardly know you! <laughs> Clank judders, and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Ah! Clank needs to be burnt in fire. He's a, a nightmare to look at. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two. For today's lesson, you gotta keep your earphones in your ear holes. Can you do it? Obviously not. You kicked out. We're gonna keep it simple, stupid. Pack a basic dish and divide up the steps. Okay. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. Does it? I think it takes flint and steel. I played in Minecraft. You get the idea. Which dish, dish do you suggest your partner, Colonel Sanders, man? Ooh, steak tartare, or tartare, or tartare. Uh-oh. Seems easy enough. It's fancy, and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind, will it? Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Hey, I feel like clicking this option would be like metagaming, because I know that KFC has delicious mashed potatoes and gravy. It is a delectable and to die for. <laughs> Actually, I'm not a huge gravy person, and I don't like instant mashed potatoes, and I'm not saying anything about KFC. But I don't like instant mashed potatoes, and I also don't like KFC mashed potatoes, so draw your own conclusions there. But I feel like that's... I feel like the game does anticipate you knowing stuff about KFC, so let's do it. Hey, he liked that! Yeah! I feel like I'm doing really well with this whole getting in on his good graces shtick. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting, bitter. Maybe mashed potatoes and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Ew. <laughs> Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own damn business. Ow! I hurt myself again. Why do I keep doing this? Uh, Sanders' heart is my business, and you'd better keep your fingers off my man. Did someone call for me? Ah, uh, no. I know what that looked like, and I swear I was just rocking out on the guitar. 
Uh, no, jeez, Van Van, the man-man. Well, I'm over here crushing Link 2's two's, Link two's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Also, I just realized that I named the first character Link, then I died and restarted, or I lost and restarted, and I was gonna name the other character, I named the other character Link 2. The idea was every time I died, I would rename the character Link whatever. Um, but I only was able to rename it because it was so early in the game when I lost. And now that I lost that one time, it, it, it now just says Link 2 forever, even though it should be Link 3. So, I'm gonna try to remember that this is Link 3 from now on. <clears throat> Ashley says, Ah, uh, no, jeez, Van Van. Well, I'm over here crushing Link 3's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old... friend. He says, oh, howdy there. Where's that bitchin' rock solo coming from? Ashley, Van Van, are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looked like Link 2's was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day we, you might be able to get up to my level. Maybe one day you could hashtag get on my level, bro. Ha! Doubt it! Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. <sighs> After all, your fried chicken was quite... spectacular. I know this voice changed. I like this new evil direction that it's going, especially because of the horrific red eye that she has. Is she a zombie from 28 Days Later? Because if so... We gotta get the hell out of here. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Ashley! Stab it. Don't you feel, deep down, that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. His name is, what was it, Harland or something? Harland! Just like in Knives Out, which I do in the voice of him for. That's funny. Ashley really is going at you hard. That's what she said. You need to ask for some backup here before things get hashtag fugly. Um, turn to Colonel Sanders, hunks, hunk of hunks in your time of need. Or turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who always has your back. Hmm. Boy, these are tough decisions because... I want Colonel Sanders to like me, but also Miriam's my friend. She's my friend, Boris. I don't know what to do. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna choose. I'm just gonna click. Colonel Sanders then! I'm here to learn and to express myself via cuisine. And I'm all out of cuisine. Not bigger with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so it's all respect format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. You're like, huh? I chose, I chose, I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that better? Sometimes conflicts can actually build character. I wouldn't want you to shy away from a healthy bit of competition with our peers, Link 2. Wow, is he just not that into you? You'd think a gentleman would defend you in a situation like this. Did you do something to offend him at some point? Why does he look like that? He hates me. Oh no, I failed. You look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but you, he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. Why must you abandon me in this time of need? <sighs> anyway, you look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Whoops. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture, up with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. Gross. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well, while your attention was elsewhere. I'd like to offer a clarification statement of something that I said before. I mentioned how I didn't really like KFC's mashed potatoes, and that is true, but mashed potatoes as a whole, I love. I'm a sucker for good mashed potatoes. When they're made with real potatoes, and you actually, you know, peel them properly so there's no skin on them, and then you just 
mash them and butter them and stick them in a stew. No, don't do that one. No, it's good though. It's delicious and I love them. So I'll be very clear on that. Anyway, back to the game. I just know, I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy smothering your nearly finished potato dish. No, don't, you're smothering it. Oh. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be proud. Whoa, Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork. I wish I had a spork to grab. And for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Oh, sorry. Drop my uh, earpiece there. It's fine, though. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. That's because I got shocked and died. This was electric. If you love something, set it free. And then he pushes you off a cliff. Together, you dig the utensil onto the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then... Filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something, do something. <laughs> Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Wow, you really did something there. Hold on right there, Link 2. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. The BCA? Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. No, it wasn't him. He did nothing wrong. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Ew, that's gross. What if I threw it onto Ashley's face again? I don't want to eat off her face. That's not clean. Can I has potatoes face? All right, get out of here, Pop. Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Whoa! It's on an axe! I didn't even realize it was on an axe blade! That took me a while. I was so busy looking at this octopus tentacle here. Whoop! And these, these little leaves of what? Cilantro or something? Whatever the hell is going on with this. Gravy and nuts or something? I don't even know. I didn't even realize it was on an axe. Bad axe, dude. Mashed, pota mashed potatoes with gravy. Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my speciality. Praised tentacle of octopus in a silky sea saltwater sauce. Bla plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rush- He doesn't have a name still, by the way. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. Uh-oh, it's gonna be poison. He's gonna die. No, don't. Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The result could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. No, student. He's gonna die. Save him! Save him! I, uh, think I left something in the oven. Oh no. I don't feel so good. He's gonna Thanos snap out of existence. Oh my god! Oh my god! He did! What It killed him! It killed him, yeah! Oh no! Why didn't you say something sooner? He's dead! Oh god, okay. Oh my god in heaven, this game, this game is so weird. Alright. Everyone step back, don't take another bite! When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone! You notice the tip of the dinner on the inside of Pop's mouth! Pop, throw up right now! Throw up, Pop! Do it! I know I've never said this to you before. It's the first time for everything, all right? Oh God, this is awful. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is immediately back to his ob oblivious self. Oopsie, tastes like poison. Okay. All right, stop that. I think the refrigerator's freaking out. 
The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shaq has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite the obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds? What? I'm sorry, what? Okay. Pop's fine then. Student has died. That's just straight up a dead, st <laughs> dead student. Literally student. Alright. I'm not sure professors here make enough money. Yeah. Ghost of student. Um, hello. I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by the really annoying student and all of his nonsense. Wait, seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all of his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like for real? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. He also carries a big stick, if you know what I mean. Anyway, okay, those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I just want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him, in a way that you find inspiring. Well, yeah, he's in a culinary school. I'd assume it'd be important to everyone here. Except Pop. I'm not sure why he's here. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Yes, do it. Succumb to your desires. Colonel Sanders. Yes, Ling Tu. There's something I need to tell you. Oh, God, no. Hold it right. Uh, what was his voice? Hold on. Why do I forget? Why do I forget? Why do I forget? Hold it right there! There's something I need to tell you first! Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world that has ever seen. Oops. And every day since, I have been working towards that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also, lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. Peter. No, that's not me. That's not my voice. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts, that our souls may grant them like like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I... Wait, hey, hey, no, like what you... Uh, shut up, I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Oops, wait, his hair, what was it doing? I missed it. I was too busy freaking out about this voice. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? Yeah, are you gonna go to jail, dude? You literally killed a guy. You can't prove. You can't prove that. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Oh, forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. Oh, look at his hair. Yeah, it's it's a star, but it's way up there. That's a problem. Oh God! Oh my God! The Spork Monster is here to fight a hero. What happened? What the hell is this now? Why is this happening? What? Oh god, that was scary. <laughs> da da da. Oh no. I, uh, I, I uh, think I left the fridge o door open later, nerds. Okay, this character is too hard to remember what to do. Um, can I stop for a second and say that spork monster thing? is the scariest, freakiest, weirdest thing this game has thrown at me in a game full of weird, scary things. Okay, I need, I need, I need a second. I need a second to think about this. Okay, Whew, I think I'm all right. Anyway, so, Spork, Spaghetti Monster, it's fine. We will not let harm come to another student. Except for that ghost kid, I kinda dropped the ball on that. Be afraid! No, can't do that. Be afraid, be very afraid of me, because I'm a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose, or is it just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence! Oh, okay. What will you do? Uh, oh, alright. Um, I'll defend! You decided to defend. Which defense will you choose? Okay. 
trepidation. You close your eyes tight, but then open one just enough to squint and see the spork monster across the battlefield. For some reason, this makes you feel more prepared for what comes next. All right. Spork monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. Oh no! You take one damage. Fat lot of good that defense did. How, how much health do I have? I'll attack. You decide to go on the attack. Cook with love. Hell yeah. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monster won't forget this. Spork monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in their energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Attack. You decide to go on the attack. I'll do uh, uh, cook with love. Oh, I can't do the other thing. Cook with love was only one of the options. I want to do the other thing. Damn it. All right, cook with love. I can't go back and uh, defend. Does one damage. Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Spork monster uses utilitensil. You take two damage from the attack. <gasps> if you take much more damage, you're not gonna survive the battle. Defend. Oh, defend. Which defends what you do. Buff up. No one can control this much buffness. You start to feel bloated and quite frankly, a little gassy. Oops, you better attack soon or you're likely to explode. You decide to go on the attack. That's what I wanted to do. Chow down. Does two damage, a powerful blow. This work monster is oozing cheese sauce under the lawn of the quad. I wonder who's gonna have to clean up, clean that up. Probably me, the ghost of student. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Oh, Colonel Sanders. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Pot pie power pinch. Whoa. Popeye Power Pinch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. Yes. Thank you, Colonel Sanders. You saved me. An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Ew. That's disgusting. Um. Hmm. I think we should spare this wretched beast. I think that's what Colonel Sanders would want. Let's spare this wretched beast. You managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul. Does he have one of those, though? Who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, but I certainly won't be back like you said. <laughs> okay, the spark monster scuttles off into the night. Yeah, I feel like we're gonna see this guy again. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but on my closer inspection, it's so much more. A book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. Why? Why would the game throw this at me now? You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco, that name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. Well, great. I'm home. I'm in bed. Thinking about Colonel Sanders. Alone. Uh-oh. Things are going to get a little rated R for my taste. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my Colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Zzz. Whoa, God. Oh, Jesus. What's happening? It's the ghost. All right. That was weird. Zzz, zzz, zzz. You wake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. I don't think any... That's uh, th No, that's not possible. <sighs> Were they memories or premonitions? <laughs> Nothing happened. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? Oh yeah, he did tell me that. It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. That's probably what it is. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. Oh, you meet up with your bestie in front of the school, but we'll pause. Again, I'm doing all this in one episode, but I need to take a break because of my voice. So I'm going to take a break because of my voice. And then the next part of this episode will continue on.
Hey, we're back in. I During the break, I went out to get something to eat. I was a little hungry, and uh, I decided to... This game is making me so hungry for, for, for KFC. So I decided to go out, and I, I stopped by a fast food place that I love very much to get myself to get myself some delicious food. I, I've decided not to name it here for obvious reasons. But uh, I'm now going to continue playing this game and try to remember the voices that I did. Not that uh, that would be too much of a problem because they're all so iconic, you know? You meet up with your bestie in front of the school before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster. Oh yeah, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um, I think I might like Clank. Oh really? Okay. Like him? Like, like, like. I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. He's not a guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? Why does uh, Clank, who by the way, is a robot and not a person, know about Colonel Sanders? That's interesting. Uh, no, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to, and was also the convertible, and all, and was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. What? I'm thinking maybe something got lost in the pressure cooker language translation there. Yeah, I should say so. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, not a boy. Uh, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders? The coolest guy in school? The most famous, famous student ever attend the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday, if you know what I mean. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great! You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did you tell me one of his secret ingredients? Don't do this, no! Link two, link three rather, don't! Her nose is itchy, just gonna go ahead and scratch that real quick. <laughs> I love this <laughs> pose she does. Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret? Ingredient? <laughs> Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. Okay, we're good. Ooh. Da 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 So, this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, what? A lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. What is that? What? What? Wait, don't you want to hear the secret ingredient? Wasn't that the whole thing? This can't be good. He told me about all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some. Show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from a super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice. He even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later when I cooked with them, a strange feel it. What? Oh, <laughs> I moused over the uh, menu thing here. A strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Uh-oh, was she drugging it up? Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch. You know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Yeah. Don't tell him about this. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Cough, fibber, cough, what? Huh? Is, is that the game saying that I'm a fibber because I, I only I do only know the one one spice though the one part of the recipe so it's true that's weird I don't understand please 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 it would mean the world to me no one has to know what came from you or from Colonel Sanders what do you think uh oh should you protect Colonel Sanders secret or share it with your bestie this requires some thinking I guess I'll make up a fake ingredient I mean I don't want her to know the recipe, and she's gonna share it with this weird friend of hers. But this could have disastrous consequences too. It depends on what I say, because if I tell her some weird thing that she puts in and it like poisons the food again and more students die. Remember when student died? That was weird. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know, how about... It was... 
Ah, it was I of Newt. I know, it sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but what can you do? Yeah, alright, well... Never mind. <laughs> Forget it. I of Newt? Wow! Her eyes light up, imagining such a thing, and you figure that you satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. Uh-oh, that's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. Whoa, cool. It's Colonel Sanders on a horse! He's arriving at school. Wow. Stand back and admire his majestic glory or run to him. Let's run to him, I guess. You decided the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. Although, I feel like Colonel Sanders doesn't feel as committed to this as I do. I think he's taking it a lot slower than I am, that is to say. Surely he'll sweep you up onto the back of his stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, oh, Colonel, my Colonel. <laughs> However, your sudden movement surprised the horse and it rears up, kicking you directly in the face. I died again. I'm gonna be Link 4 before I know it. The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. Whew. In the darkness, you see a vision. Oh, it's the ghost of student. Ooh, Link 2. Three, rather. I am here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. It is important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end. So you know it's serious. What? Why? I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. Uh-oh. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll repeat your name three times, but first, why don't you go ahead and spell it for me? It's awkward. And that name is... Oh, before he can continue, he's suddenly awake. Oh, no. Ah, jeez. You awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. That's not Colonel Sanders. Oh, there he is. He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is that just his natural seasoned musk? Uh, compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. Or lean in for a kiss. I don't want to go- that's too forward. I think Colonel Sanders- I don't want to scare him off. What's, uh, the craftsmanship? Maybe he shouldn't be riding a horse to school, and maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who is in the wrong here, but one thing is for sure, that Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressed into my face. That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. It worked. He likes it. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van. We're doing something bad, bad. And by the way, they're hiding. You know it must be really bad. Uh-oh. They're going to... Bomb the school or something. Like counterfeiting recipes bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad? You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulders. Hulking shoulders. Uh, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure. Wait, hold on. Oh dear, that's the voice. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Oh, that's funny. Act like you're not interested in them, but really try and get a closer look. You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. Do I have like a hair on my nose? Cause it keeps itching in this one spot. It's bothering me. A magic spell, does he have, does he know about the book? I hope not. However, he notices you eavesdropping. Oh, well, not very good at that then. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. Ahem, it's time for class and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn? Now you've upset them. Oh no, his hair got weird. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules. I'm not- I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you! It like the clown? Probably. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes pancakes. I mean panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it was they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. Uh-oh. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. No, I saw it, you can't lie to me. 
I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom and its contents are a secret. You notice they haven't been just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. Save Pop! We're playing. <laughs> Before you can dig any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. All right, let's do it. Let's get on with it. Beep, beep. <laughs> Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Good. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Well, he ran over his foot. Bzzzwomp. <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language. Not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand, stand mixer. Words. <laughs> Van Van jumps back to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Oh, hell yeah. Whoa! Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be time. Must be over. Must. Wait. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Bat my eyelashes. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourself. Save it for the arena at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe you can help maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then Sprinkles arrives to signal the start of class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry belly dog is, wait, rub his furry dog belly, he loves it. Sprinkle stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Sprinkles jumps on you and licks your face. Aw, I've had professors do that before, but it was much less adorable. Hmm. Oh, whoa, down boy, down, auf toppen. <laughs> well, he's suddenly German. That command shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up, what's up with that? Sorry, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without much further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You wanna pay attention to the lesson, truly you do. Which is why in 1776, the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. Uh, okay. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. Just gonna go ahead and put that back in. Uh, damn it! Well, when you come to Sprinkles holding a tiny tray of food in front of you, well, Link 3, Naturally, this appears to be you to be a simple sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? Uh-oh. I don't know. A glass of water? A shimmering biscuit? Pepper, I mean? Or a dog biscuit? I don't know. There's no good answers here. That's nothing. <laughs> That's nothing you sample. Shimmering pepper, I guess, would be the best one. But also, he's a dog. Dog biscuit. Because of the shape it's baked in, you assume the dog biscuit is a treat made by sprinkles. An example of his own culinary talent, perhaps. You reach out for it when... Sprinkles jumps and bites onto your cooking apron? What kind of monster would steal a dog's favorite biscuit? Oh, I'm sorry. That was a mistake. Oops. Your apron is left in tatters. The entire class looks on in horror as you fall unconscious from the embarrassment. I never even got to taste it. Is this the end? You... F what? You faded to darkness, but something is there. The Spark Monster! <laughs> No! Borco, wait, that's Borco? Borco, what are you doing here? It's not your time, my friend. Your act of kindness has not been forgotten. You watch as your apron magically repairs itself. You won't have to live in embarrassment anymore. Thank you, my friend. Wherever you are. Did we go back in time? What happened? Am I Link 4 now? Let's say I'm still Link 3. I think I just got reset. That was weird. All right, let's try the pepper. Uh, a brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. You should have stayed out of the kitchen. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. 
<laughs> oh no, it's you again. Ma- my friend, you. This guy again. I'm here to give you an important message. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... Cough, cough. I was saying, to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... Cough, cough. Sorry, I think I've still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through... <coughs> to fulfill... <coughs> the prophecy... <coughs> you must... You feel yourself again to regain consciousness. Wait, I want to stay. My no. Oh my god. You know what? I have to pause and see what's going on with my nose because it's so ungodly itchy. I'm gonna regain consciousness in a second. So let's stay excited for that, everyone. <sighs> Hopefully that stops. Anyway, you feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. All right, let's do this. Ah oh, man. Yeah. Sorry. Can't catch a break, that guy. You come to and find everyone staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever. Why did you put it on my plate, then? You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. No, my nose is still itchy, but I'm going to try to ignore it. Why was it on the sample platter, then? Why was that in your own dog treat biscuit on the sample platter? We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. Oh god, no. And your arrivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared. Via timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Demand that they stop wasting everyone's time, yeah. Is everything a competition with you two? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, not with me. I'm on a personal journey. To learn, to love. To learn to love? Well, sure, why not? But definitely not to constantly battle. Yeah, stop getting your genres crossed. Don't you have some portable monsters to capture or something? Pokemon, yeah. I need to eat if I'm gonna have the energy to sustain my education and pursue my dreams of being a master chef. How are any of us supposed to get anywhere if we're constantly fending off challenges from every know-it-all with an apron? Good point. Besides, I already bought my own lunch. Link to, you should have it. I will give you, it will give you the energy you need to succeed. Well, no, you'd need it. Your lunch. Miriam reaches out and presents a gift to you. Oh, it's tiny and adorable. I love it. My special grilled cheese and tomato soup with chocolate milk to wash it down and a tartlet for dessert. I don't know what that is. I don't know what's in the tomato soup either. What is this? I don't get it. Oh, well. It only takes you about five seconds to eat Miriam's tiny food, but it's just what you needed for motivation. You know what? I've learned enough for today. Let's battle! Oh, okay. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a mu lun lunchroom, not a sportsing court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. Whew. That was close. At least not until we turn on the timer. Uh-oh. Timer ready! Just then a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words timer ready. Oh, okay, good. That's what I'm talking about. Aroo! I stand corrected. If it's a battle you want, it's a battle you'll get. My best, he can beat the best of them. He can best the best of them. Best, be best believe it. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. You're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Uh-oh. It always boils 100 sec- Oh, what temperature does water boil at? Oh no, I think it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit. No, Celsius. No, fe no, oh no. Oh, I didn't click. I didn't get a chance. What are you thinking like to? Get your head in the game. I didn't click. I didn't guess. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did you say to use? 11. Okay, that one I got. That's right. You might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're heading in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Hell yeah. All right, all right, okay. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. Okay, what state of mind offers the most flavor? I don't know, trust? Oh, it's wrong, I wasn't trust. I'm begging you to get it together. Get it, I'm a dog. It's never the wrong time for some dog jokes. Okay, yeah. Uh, next question, okay. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy. For, so where does it come from? Uh, 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 deep beneath the surface of the ocean, the Pacific. That was wrong. Oops. 
This is a horrible time to start forgetting important things. Yeah, can you possibly recover from so many wrong answers? Nope! Game over! No! I gamed over. I lost. I knew it. I knew I would do bad. <laughs> okay, so what temperature does water boil at? It's 100 degrees, but is it Fahrenheit or Celsius? Now, Fahrenheit is like the temperature that water boils, but Celsius is like the temperature that people are comfortable with. I think that's correct, or is it the opposite? It might be the opposite. I don't know, let's try again. Okay, here we go. What temperature does it boil at? I'm gonna say Fahrenheit. Oh, it wasn't right. Okay, it's Celsius. What are you thinking? Okay, that, that that's fine. 11, I know that's right. Everything else? I don't know. Let's say gratitude. Hey, that was right. You must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Okay, I won't. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is, oh yeah. When you were a child, your father told you blah, blah, blah. The shoulder of Orion or a small town or big dreams are born. Yeah, that's right. This is your shot. And you're not gonna miss your chance to blow. Aru, you try to shout, shout out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Sizzling? Hell, no, that was wrong. <laughs> Don't make me get the spray bottle. Next question. Oh, you notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Link 2. He's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoonfuls of gravy would it take? And if, oh, Colonel Sanders blowing you a kiss, oops. What are you thinking? I saw the timer was counting down. Get your mind back into the competition. Grr, you were stranded on a desert island with only one desert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. Oh no, I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're failing, but falling behind. Uh, 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 walking along the beach. What does this have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuits? I don't know. Woof, woof. You're really struggling to keep up. I think I could do this. I think all I have to do is snap my head in the game. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. <gasps> eh. Yikes. Zzz, I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Where You might not have any friends, but Link 3 does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. Uh-oh. Uh, when you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand to the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Link 3, no! But you're not fast enough. And your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the spinning beating mixer beater. Oh, there's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Oops, my bad. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Someone's rumbling. Everyone stop what you are doing right now. This battle is over. No, it can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Is that true? Sweetheart, look at your hands. You simply can't go on. Ah, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Link 3's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose that you should at least tell us what you prepared? Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. All right, whatever. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was gonna ask Link 2 to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Whoa, cool! Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquet atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. I don't actually know what that means. Also, were these blue things here before? Feel like they weren't. Feel like they weren't. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce, gross. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? Oh, you. He <laughs> he. As he places a sauce-covered finger onto his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his he ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. 
internalize the rage you feel or put yourself between Colonel Sanders and Ashley. I feel like Ashley's doing all the work herself in terms of getting him to not like her. So I'm not super worried about it. I'm gonna internalize the rage I feel, that's healthy. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash and they fall off your face, which means people have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. That was a mistake, I guess. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. Uh. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from the run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed anything before? No, I don't think that. That's exactly what I think. Well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in the culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way, hey. But I've walked out the paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. <laughs> I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a liar. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together. Which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved that when I was going to amount to something, no amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. Careful it doesn't burst out your eyes and burn your eyebrows off, because that'll happen. That's possible. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Okay, just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening shadowy presence. Uh oh, battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst, it's the spork monster? Why was Pop there just a sud for a second? Oh, it's Sporko. It is I. It is I. I know I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you. And I apologize. I know what it's like to have to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Aw, oh, thanks, Marco. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. That's not true. I did defense for a while. I know that you're strong and looking and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to the school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no, I was a golden retriever. All right, I can't do the voice anymore. Another dog? But I was still a student until one day some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me and I was forever transformed. Huh. That's interesting. So, what? He had a, one of those books, and uh, and I have it now. And Ashley and Van Van have one too. That's weird. A magic, a magic spell book. Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way, I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. Great. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. And the kitchen, kitchen of ki- Damn it. All right, whatever. Link two, three, rather. Together, I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Ah, by the way, the house that I'm living in at night during this time of year has spiders all along the outside of it. 
Luckily, they don't really get it here, like inside too much, but just when you, if you ever have to come through the, if you like get home at night and have to come in, there's like just a wall of just spiders. They're big too. They're not small spiders. So every time I walk through there at night, I'm always just super paranoid. And every time I see like a little flicker of something, sometimes it's just a dirty shirt that I need to clean off. But every itch that I feel, I'm like, oh, there it is. The spiders, they're on me. So that's what, that's why I'm itching so much. Every itch that I have, I'm like, oh, make sure it's not a spider. Ooh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm about to find out. I'm gonna go to Colonel Sanders' house. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. I love the chicken over here. Aw, is this him as a little boy? He still got the goatee? That's funny. Kentucky, yep. Uh, camel. He was in Egypt. He was in Egypt. What's this here? Is that like a bell? Just like a, just like a bell. Cool. It looks like you live in, you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you ever been working on a new recipes of any of your own lately? Huh? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. Just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to get find the right balance of flavor and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. Oh, I haven't started yet. It's meant to it's meant to pair with something spicy. Or something crispy. Both perhaps. <gasps> a spicy crispy chicken sandwich? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him? Or keep it a secret just for you? Uh-oh. Now, I feel like every time I choose the bottom one, it's led to death. I'm not gonna use that, because that would be like the thing where you do like multiple choice and you're like, oh, I just did the letter A, so the next one can't be the letter A. Even though that's not true, statistically speaking. But I, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know what the right one to do here is. Reveal it or keep it a secret. I feel like I want to reveal it, but I also don't want to be too, like, thirsty for him and tell him all my secrets, because I love him so much. I don't know. I guess let's, let's reveal it. I feel like it's day two out of three, I assume. It's getting late, so we're almost, I'm assuming that each of these three days is the entire game. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I'm, like, past the halfway point. So, reveal it. Let's just do it. You decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. Ew. I present to you my original coleslaw. Wait, what? This is, uh, not what I was expecting. This is neither spicy nor crispy. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. Is that the word? Lux? Luke's? I don't know. He just had a voice. Did you hear that? That was weird. Magnificent. Together you trout out on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I could admire its taste later and think back on this moment. He's gonna steal my recipe. That's for sure. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping! Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the kernel. Cool! Okay. I will. Whoa. Listen to that. Listen to that baby purr. That's funny. Well, I don't know what to look at first. I feel like this game would trick me into only being able to click on a couple of things. So what do we got? We have the bell, these three pictures, which are all different ones, I assume. This urn, this candle, this comb, it looks like, a chicken, and outside. I'm gonna click on this bell first. This must be where he keeps the secret recipe. You think for a moment. One number is important to Colonel Sanders. Wait, I don't wanna actually sneak in there. Then it dawns on you. As soon as you turn to dial to 11, 11, 11, the safe, oh, safe opens. Uh-oh, inside it you find a single note. Can chicken he be prepared sashimi style? Can chicken be prepared sashimi, sh sashimi style? 
Hmm. Okay. I don't know what sashimi is, so that doesn't really help me. I'm gonna look outside. You gaze out the window across the vet Across the vast ocean and mountain range beyond. Just then the ghost of student pops out! Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? No, I wasn't! Stop bringing that up to me! Wait, what? Never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window a crack, and the ghost of student is swept out with a breeze. Oh no! I'm never gonna learn his name! This is very funny to me. I gotta say. Let's look at this urn now. Ooh, you take a closer look at the large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. Don't wipe it! You're gonna summon the genie. It says, Here lie the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Okay. Great. Poor guy. <laughs> wow, that is funny. Okay. This chicken thing. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken. It's stuffed, sitting on a corner table. I just assumed it was like a statue or something. Uh, when you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real! Taxidermy must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot read, the true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I want to keep clicking on stuff, but this door just opened. Oh! I open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. Okay. He's going to walk in on me right now. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep, a deep hug, breathing in his scent. Ugh, they say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? No. Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he's been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket! You forgot to take it off! Oh no! You decided now is your moment, moment to make a big move! Uh-oh! You tell him you're cold, you fess up and tell the truth. I feel this game, I think it's gonna throw me a curveball in that if I say any of these things that's the wrong one, it's going to like, I, I'm, you fess up and tell him the truth and he's gonna get scared and like punch you in the face and kill you or something. Cause this game seems very weird like that. So let's just say, let's, let's, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's make our big move. Oh, whoa, 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 this isn't that kind of game. Oh, okay. Now, now that we blame you for trying, but still. Game over! Whoa! Okay! Well... Oh, wait, did I get a- Oh, no! I got a game over before. This was after, I think, I, I, I got reset by the spaghetti monster. I mean, the Swark monster. So that should have been Link 3 at that point. No, 4 at that point. So this should be Link 5 when I try again. Now I'm on Link 5, okay. Unless I missed another game over. I feel like I did. I feel like I haven't been keeping track of my game overs. What link am I on? Wait, what? Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't recognize that. So I thought, did it like reset to something I don't remember? No. All right. Well, oh, okay. <clears throat> Here we go. So this is not the right one. I like that it just ended my game without any kind of um, explanation. I'll just tell him I'm cold. That seems to be right. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. I just got a little cold and thought this might warm me up. Colonel Sanders smiles and scoots closer to the fireplace. Scoot, it's warm by the fire. Why don't you come a little closer? I thought you said this wasn't that kind of game, game. Suddenly, everything feels like it's moving too fast. Final exams are tomorrow. You should be thinking about what you're gonna cook. Yeah, remember it's the last day of school? I should be home studying. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving the colonel alone in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Oops, I clicked on something wrong. I'm sorry. I tried to click on the, uh, uh, the area that I've been clicking on. I accidentally clicked off of it. I'm sorry, everyone. You stop yourself. Colonel. Hmm. Yes, Link 5. I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Oh, nice. So it's working. It's working. Dream sequence. Great. Zzz, whoa, cool. 
Uh, was that the same one as before? I think it was. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Okay. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. So that's funny. So it's not going to give me the, you did it wrong, so here's the game over and you'll just start over again. Which means I'll have to like actually play the game over again if I did make the wrong choice. But I didn't. And I'm going to take a break because that's the end of the night. So we'll, we'll be back for more exciting action. We're back. While I was taking a break, I was playing Stardew Valley, a game that I love. And I just found out, I've been playing this game for months and months and months. And I only just discovered that if you hold down the A button, I'm playing on uh, Switch. If you hold down the A button while you walk across like a field of plants to harvest, you can you don't have to keep pressing it. You can hold it down and you'll pluck each one of them. I have been literally hurting my thumb pressing the button over and over and over again to get all my crops picked up and I only just now found out that you could hold it down. You can also do that when it comes to like pl like putting stuff down or planting stuff, I guess because I have all these kegs that I fill with coffee beans, and if you just hold it down and walk across your thing of coffee beans, it will all fill up. So, that's a huge game changer. I wish that I had known that from the beginning. I love Stardew Valley. I can't believe I didn't know that. Oh well. Uh, now that I know, it'll become even easier to play that game, so that's good. All right, it's the third day, the last day of the semester. Final exams are today. All right, today is a day that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. Oh, by the way, I didn't say it started storming during the break. So I, I think it's calmed down right now. So there's no thunder and or lightning, but that'll probably happen. It's not supposed to stop until like four in the morning, which is why I'm not just going to wait for it to pass. So. We'll deal with that. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. I'm back, sorry. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous! My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Oh, such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Yes, he could. Although, again, I don't know what the right answer here is. I don't know if I'm supposed to lean into this whole thing and be too hashtag thirsty. I'll flatter him. Why not? Oh, you like that. Okay, good. You know, I think I think we might make a gr gr great team. Ah! A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is run out the door and get home. All right, see ya. There's still one more day after of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. Yeah, I can't believe this school is three days long. Hey, I have a chicken on my in my room too. We're connected, you see. I don't know what this is, by the way. I don't understand. Or this. Pearl necklace. In uh, what looks like a KFC thing. That's subtle. Okay, you find something. Wait, very important waiting for you. I, I, I didn't read it fully. Where have you been? I. Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. It's okay, I was just- But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. I love her so much. She's one of my favorite characters. Sure, but you will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. Well, that's good. I think I can believe that. Since I'd been partnering with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Clank, the robot, the robot that can't speak because it's a robot. That clank? Cool. Of course I told him. You, there's a thunder. You better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know a little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiral out of control. I should say so. Did she just say skydiving? As if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? And now I'm not really sure where we stand. 
at the bottom of the ravine. You don't give Miriam time to tell the whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. Bear. Funny. And I went on a date too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. We didn't sleep together. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection, wowzers. <laughs> I'd love to hear Patrick Warburton say wowzers. Uh, okay, Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school? Why is that... Why is that up here and not down here? And why is it an option for me to click on? And why does she not just say that? This is weird. This is weird. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. Okay, that was... That was really streamlined, or, or what am I saying? It was it quick. It was very quick. It was weird. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking up pop, picking on Pop, even th though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because you know, he's Pop. Yeah. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. <laughs> Oh, great! It's great! I'll order you up one right away! I have to sneeze. Ooh, gazooned me. Oh, it's great! I'll order you up one right away! I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please! <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Yeah, we got it, Pop. You can get your swirly dipped, too. You can get your swirly dipped, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Like me? Oh, I can't really stand up. There's The desk is too far forward. Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school? There is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You've got some nerve, Link 2, 3, 5. <laughs> Uh-oh. Picking on a defenseless horse? Lightning. Uh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm six at this point. No, I'm five. I'm, I'm still five. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. Oh, you clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. I forgot about that. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. I'll never give up. Ever. Colonel Sanders arrives, just as it appears things are close to boiling over. Cooking pun? A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Link 5, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? He's being nice, bro. But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce, ew? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say. It was bland. Excuse me, Link 5. Uh-oh. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. Oops. I didn't want to say that. Uh -huh. Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, colonel. I hate the word colonel, by the way. Like, it, it's so clearly misspelled in such a horrific way. Whatever. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. It's why I'm going to culinary school, after all. See you inside, Link 5. That rhymes. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the squad to get some distance. Some sick dist, bro. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel about that interaction with Ashley, A oh, it's like A-E-S-H. I never even noticed the E. I just thought the ending, the lay part, Lee. You take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Was that yesterday or was that two days ago? I feel like that was the end of night one. That's weird. Uh, whoa, that, what's that, that's that book. It looks like bad news. Is that supposed to say what's that book? Is that like the first spelling mistake I've encountered in this game? I think so. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells. I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a... Jesus. Magic book if it weren't really powerful. Flash of lightning, by the way. I know you guys probably wouldn't be able to see that on, on cam, but... I saw it. I saw it and I, I panicked. I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings. 
cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I don't want to do this. I wish I could stop myself from doing this, because this is something I would not want to do. I could use the spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That seems like a bad idea. That is way drastic. Whoa. Couldn't you do something else like anything else? Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine. It is drastic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. This- no! <laughs> Obviously not, right? Like, this is a bad idea, right? Like, right? Obviously, this is a bad idea, right? How is this good in any way? I like this guy. I want him to be my lover. And I'm gonna forget him? Huh? Just, just to help focus on the actual thing. Although, I guess they did set that up in that the last, the, yesterday the battle, I was doing really bad because I was too focused on the colonel. That's awkward. Huh. I won't do it. Right? That'd be bad. I feel like that- I, I just- I can't imagine why that would be a good thing, so I won't do it. Oops, I cast it anyway! Ha! You begin to recite the spell, but you stumble on the words, and the only effect it seems to have is to make you forget what it is you are doing. I've been there. Oh, right. After looking at the page again, it comes rushing back to you. You've got a mem- Something about this moment feels very familiar. Uh-oh. Huh. Is this just gonna... This is definitely feeling familiar, but not in a good way. I'm gonna keep doing it. This says the same thing, so far. Uh, it's rushing back to you. You've got a great memory-erasing spell and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Deep in your heart, you know that proceeding with this spell is a terrible idea. Like, seriously, don't do it. Memories are important. Okay. Oh, man. She's just standing there freaking out. Why would she not do something at some point? <sighs> you begin to read it again, knowing that nothing can stop you now. And I can't even go back. Ooh. Well, here goes nothing. Hold on to your butt. Yes! Yes! The, the Jurassic Park line. Hold on to your butt. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is what it does every time I get a game over and it resets! You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Uh-oh. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Uh-oh. This is all the same. Oh, I accidentally clicked on the... Menu button. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh, I guess I ate that biscuit the first time. All right, I'm gonna skip through some of this and see if it ever says anything different. He walks in, okay. Hey, all right, so he, I don't know him. It's him, it's favorite student, Harland. Yep, that is his name. I want to see if he remembers who I am. He's given me his handkerchief. Huh. This can't be your first interaction. Hmm, that takes on a different context. What if he never forgets this moment? I did. I'll refuse again. I want to make all the same decisions and get to the end again. Oh, all right. This part's going to be a little tough. He never said anything, by the way, about knowing who I am or there was no, I don't I was trying to read the text. I was skipping forward, but I wanted to see if there was anything um that, that indicated that it knew I reset or anything. I didn't see any, so this battle is going to be a little bit weird because I don't know. I think I said 100F last time. That's wrong. I kind of want to do make the same mistakes that I made the first time. Uh, 11's true. The other one is gratitude is the next one. Yes. Great. Okay. Now what? Uh, small town. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Let's see, what is the sound of success sizzling? Oh no, that's wrong. I think I got that wrong last time though. Next question. All right, I think everything's cool. Oh yeah, and the rest of this is just weird. All right, so I think I'm in the right path, you know. Oh, okay. 
Here we go. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't even know if it will let me do this. I'm reminded a lot of Undertale with this. Or at least I'm I'm think I'm just thinking of Undertale and how in that game, if you were to get to this point, it would say something about like, oh you're back, huh? You regretted your decision or something. So I won't cast the forbidden spell. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Here we go, I'm able to progress. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for students to arrive. He clears his voice <coughs> to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him as a snack, or dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially Sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. Yeah, you don't want to get in the way of a dog that might like accidentally bite you or something. So let's wait. I don't like that he doesn't have pupils anymore. Sprinkles stops in his tracks. He focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. What's gonna happen? When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Ah! Sprinkles turns feral and runs out, runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. No, don't! Wow! He just ran off. Uh, yeah, it's raining out there, so I don't know if that's gonna pick up on the audio. Probably will. I have the gain turned down pretty much all the way, but what can you do? He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence, I told you never to come back here, Terrence. I will destroy you, Terrence. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? His parents, Terrence's parents. You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel. Ew, I'm sorry. In hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. Ahem. I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Link 5, I think. Actually, you know what? There was one Link... No, this is the same Link. I just forgot everything and so did everyone else? Did I actually go back in time? Is this Link 5 or 6? I don't know. I'm gonna say it's still Link 5, even though it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Thank you, Link 5, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, but before you can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by words and spark coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. Bzzz. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. It's really coming down out there. We're... Yikes. But no! You had to show off to your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joanne. I know it's Joan. I just thought it would be funny, and it was. J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzzzt. Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. I thought she loved it. Why is she mad all of a sudden? Or what, 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 what happened? What changed? Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can hold on, you can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Actually, they can't all hold hands. Clank doesn't have hands. Sad beep. Ah. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Oh no, he's broken! He died! No amount of seasoning is gonna make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Considering that he himself is wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of, in term, <clears throat> in terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the loan to be alone with his shoe. Room to be alone with the shoe. What am I saying? Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. I've been in situations like that, where there's just like drama happening between two people in a public place and everyone else is just like... It's like the, uh, it's, it's, it's like the Breaking Bad thing with Jesse when he's just like... It's just like that. Okay. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Down like they went in the skydiving. Also, Clank is gone. Why is he still here? There he's, okay, good. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Oh yeah, remember how it's the final day of school? Well, that was unfortunate. 
But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. Trademark. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. I think I have an idea who it is. Not Miriam. Oh, maybe it is Miriam. I thought it was going to be Colonel Sanders. Okay. Hey, Miriam. Are you okay? Miriam, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Miriam? That's funny. Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. That's, that's pretty mad. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is just a silly boy. Not a boy. I know that you know this, I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone. However, I need Colonel Sanders. Me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. But first we have to stop by, I'm in love town. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. You're not gonna settle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. You know, I feel like this is not the right path to take with somebody who's just gone through a bad breakup. Also, it stopped raining for now, so we'll see. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you met to meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first person to someone to show a little interest anyhow. Here, it gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I'm a good friend. This is what Doki Doki Literature Club, hmm, Doki Doki Literature Club should have been, by the way. Natsuki should have, wait, Sayori should have been all like, I need someone, I need help, and you should have been there for her, instead of being there for her. You know what I mean? I don't want to spoil that game. Just go play it if you haven't. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make very special soup. What do you mean by that? What's so special about it? And I bet the Professor Dog is going to love it up. I wouldn't call him that. I feel like he hates that. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. All right, that's good. This is it, the location of your final challenge, a test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. Sorry. And a chance to beat the pants off Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his evil -er counterpart, Ashley. -er. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Link 5's famous chicken pot pie. I'm into it. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram sesh is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Link 2, what are you doing here? There's still time before the exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success and visualizing novels and visual novels like this one. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. <laughs> the pot pie has begun to bake and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. I'm going to guess, if I can, if I may, if you'll allow it, that I'm going to be too distracted by Colonel Sanders' beauty and epic good looks and not take out my pot pie. It's gonna burn or catch fire or something or explode. Hmm. Uh, visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. Why would I, okay, I didn't realize I was lying to him. Yeah, obviously you can smell it cooking. You'd usually happy share your food with anyone who was hungry, but the last time you met Colonel Sanders get in your head, you let Colonel Sanders get in your head. It cost you a cook off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes up behind you. Fess up about your practice dish. Yeah, see, here we go. Ignore it like there was now sound, no sound at all. This is what I was saying. This is a bad option. So of course I'm gonna do it. Did you hear that? Hear what? Hear what? I distinctly heard a bell chime. Somebody must be training Sprinkles to do a trick. I bet his mouth is watering. Strange, I was gonna say that my mouth is watering. I sure could use some delicious pot pie right about now. Alas, I'll have to look somewhere else for something tasty to put in it. Smoke begins billing out of the oven, filling the arena around you. All right, Colonel. Bye. See ya. Leave. 
<coughs> yes, I guess you uh, will. I'll leave you to it then. Happy visualizing. A disappointed Colonel Sanders leaves the arena. When the coast is clear, you finally open the oven. To find your practice pie has been reduced to ash. I knew it. I knew it. Smells like lunch. Beat it, Pap. There's no time left. The final showdown. Okay. <laughs> the final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. Uh-oh. What's what? What will this lead to then? Why was that important? Is it possible that, uh, it, did it just hurt my chances with the Colonel? Or is it that because I didn't take it out in time, I'm not going to know how to put the finishing touches on it. And so my actual one is going to be bad. Probably that last one. Or both. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. Whoa. <laughs> except, that is, except to cook with everything you've got. I've given it all she's got, Captain. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pie pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge of glory to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. I hate these two. They're the worst. Well, let's go for it. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. You wouldn't know based on looking at the image, though. She's definitely prepared to go to go big going small. <laughs> okay. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices. Herbs? Mm. But he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, registered, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. If only you could be there to see it. This is my biggest problem with visual novels. It's like, they always describe these really neat things that are that would be really cool to look at, but unfortunately... Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. What is that? Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, Baster Blaster. Baster Blaster. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chop... I can't do it. As he chops open a sea urchin. L <clears throat> Let's rock and roid. Ashley scoops her pastries off a tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. That's funny. Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point cooking chicken cooking technique. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? That's what I'm saying. It's the singularity as was foretold. What? We mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self-destruct. What? Van Man quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of the arena! Did he just save the world? What? What? As you fr frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she gonna use some dark magic to turn the tide? Stop her! Kill her! Shoot her! You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? No! Don't! Bad news bears, you guys. Bad news bears. Uh-oh. 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 Here's the thing. I wish that I could use the book to stop her from using the book. Like, if there was a spell that said, don't allow any magic to happen, that would be good. But I don't think that's what it's going for. I think it's, she's going to use a spell to make something delicious, and I could also use a spell to make something delicious. Earlier in the game, I did took the easy way by using the appliance or whatever, and I hurt my hand. Hurt my hand real bad, you guys. Uh, so I don't think I'm supposed to do it. There was a whole thing that Colonel Sanders was going on about, about uh, doing things the hard way or the easy way. And sometimes the easy way is much more difficult. So of course I'm gonna do it. You take out the sphere on spellbook and let your instincts guide you to a page you've never seen before. Mistake, big mistake. Well, the whole thing is a mistake to be sure. It's a summoning spell that will conjure up a spork monster. Now seems like a good time to add some chaos into the mix. Yeah, things aren't hectic enough. You have summoned me. Ah, the broom cooking arena. So many fine memories of battling in this place, in my old life. In your old life? I wasn't all, hey, hey, I already had this conversation. I wasn't always the monster you see before me, no. Once, I was but a student like yourself who attended this school. Spork Monster notices the book you're holding. I see what's going on here. Things aren't going your way, going your way, huh? Been there, my friend. I tried to cast a spell on myself to imbue my body with the powers of my favorite foods. As you can imagine, things did not go as planned. 
When spells say only cast in case of emergency, they mean it. I'm kind of in a pinch here. Got any better ideas? The spork monster, s monster smiles, uh, curls up mischievously. Huh? The spork monster's smile curls up mischievously. For starters, never cast spells on yourself. Cast them on your rivals. This doesn't seem like good advice. Just tell me who's giving you trouble and we'll take very good care of them. Uh-oh, don't do this. This is bad. You motion to Ashley and before you can think better of this dastardly decision, he recites a spell that turns her into a chicken? Ooh, no. She's gonna get eaten. She's gonna get eaten. This isn't good. This is bad, actually. Now a mere bird, she flaps her wings and glides off into the pr produce section of the arena, far from her station. She's gonna get eat. Okay, gotta go, bye. <laughs> no, uh-oh, this could be dangerous. You're immediately racked with guilt over this act of blatant transmogrification. Yeah, you don't know what to do. It would be poetic justice for Ashley to live out the rest of her days as a chicken, and yet that seems unspeakably cruel. After all, it's just a cooking competition. <laughs> oh, now the stakes are not that high? Stakes. Ashley remains a chicken or try- I'll try to save her. I don't want her to get eaten. You turn to the next page and cast a reversal spell. Chicken Ashley immediately transforms back into herself. Oh, that was easy. Good. Buck? She's in shock and still- wait. <clears throat> Buck? She's still in shock and still exhibiting some chicken-like movements, but otherwise... Seems to be alright. Appears to be alright. Okay. Ahem. Does it just me, or does the chicken seem remarkably fresh today? Right then you realize that Colonel Sanders witnessed your entire sabotage! He is not impressed. I'm sorry, Colonel! Your heart sinks as you think of how much you might have disappointed him and ruined your chances of any kind of future together. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. Give up and drop out of culinary stool. Well, that's it. You made it this far and now you're gonna quit? Suit yourself! Game over. All right, we'll try that again. That was bad. All right, it's actually, I thought it would just put me back to that last decision, but now it's putting me back to this one. So I'll do it the hard way. Fine, fine. Who needs magic when you've got passion? You know what? I've always said that. I'm going to do it the hard way. What? <laughs> Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win in your own turns, terms, and gives you a subtle wink from across the room. Hey, everyone, look over there. Subtle. <laughs> I believe in you. I, I believe in you, Link 5. I might have- I might be saying Link 2 at many points during this because that's what it says. Miriam notices too. And I've always believed in you, Link 5, since we were little kids! I'm kind of still a little kid, if you think about it. Because I'm your best friend forever! You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you! Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's flying the plane? I mean cooking! Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Boy, if I had a nickel for every time somebody tossed some, a handful of spices into my boiling noodles, I'd, I'd have a euphemism. I don't know. I, I don't know. What was I saying there? What was the joke? Oh, God, guys. I'm so, I'm so insecure. I'm so scared. I'm also trying to piece together how long this episode is going to be based on my record times. The first one, which is the first day, took about an hour and 45 minutes, I think. And the second one took about 50 minutes. And this one, we're now at 44 minutes, 45 minutes. So all in total, that's over three hours, I think. I can't be bothered to do math at a time like this. I've got cooking to do. It's just going to be a long, long episode, I think. It's the secret ingredient. Oh! Oh no! She doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. It's Eye of Newt! And where in the world should you get an Eye of Newt from? Oops! Oh no! The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards! The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air. Uh-oh. That's not good. Uh, boiling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. Oh no! Oh, it's the spork! Wait, it's a different one? It is I, Steve the Spork Monster. Steve? Wait. The way it happened to Borko. You're not here to battle me, are you? We spork monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Well, that's good. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? This is funny. That's really funny. I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? 
Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got the grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. Uh-oh. I see what you're up to. Crisscross magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? Ha, huh, yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef myself, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country, you can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell a very long and evolved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I said competition. It's, it's shorter. It's a time saver, you know. I understand. It's kind of like that time in Monster School that I had fallen asleep during Scare Tactic class, and when I woke up, you toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Well, that's good that he takes it. He knows when to get out of there. Never mind, I'll tell you later. Good luck. Okay, well, that was weird. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. Oh, here, we're back at this decision. I'm not gonna drop out this time. Center my hands, center my chi. My hands and my chi, they're centered. There we go. I'm going to summon extra power from deep within. I can do this if I truly believe Give up and drop out of culinary school. Oh no, oh, I died. All right, I'm gonna summon extra power from deep within myself. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. This is the symbol for win. Also, I hate that every time I wanna do something funny with the camera, I always look to see how it's gonna turn out in my viewfinder over there, which means I'm not actually looking into the camera when I do this, which is annoying. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. It's suddenly Dragon Ball. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My knees are not weak. My, my, wait. Arms are sweaty. Yes? Mom, spaghetti, that's what I'll make. My taste buds are preparing their entire lives for... Ghost, I'm student. Yes, Link 2, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. Oh no! You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Bitter, why? Sebi, my heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds are preparing their entire life for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin levitating off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power you can do anything, except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up your chicken pot pie, overcooked in the oven, it can't be served. Oh no! Damn it! But don't worry, dear Link Five. You may have suffered some setbacks, but who's talking to me right now? What do you mean, dear Link Five? Who is this? But all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude. Colonel Sanders decided, decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say that I'm truly in prey. Stuh. You've been thinking on your feet, rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right behind you, side you. Ooh, what's he doing back there, huh? She's gonna help me. That's good. I, I got him on my side, I guess. I'm here to hail. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're gonna need it. Wait, has he made his own food? Is he gonna lose? I don't want him to lose. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What'll happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. If this were a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, I would be chaotic good, I think. What? A uh, guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising offense effects that surpass their individual efforts. I guess that's true. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union? Time's up, students. Okay, so... Are we assembling, like, a KFC meal? He's got the fried chicken. I've got the mac and cheese. Oh, and I think he's still gonna have the coleslaw that I gave him from the other day. So we're gonna add that to the mix. All we need is a drink. Has that ever come up in this game? Like, any anything to drink? I don't know. Time's up, students. When time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. Well, yeah, one of our students died in the first... <laughs> First class, are we gonna talk about that? Does anybody need therapy, by the way? 
We lost a student day one. That was a problem. It's where it seems we're missing some stu- It seems we're missing- No. Oh. It seems we're missing some students. Pop, Clank. That's interesting. These are the two students that I was- I had to choose for Miriam. You got a mouse in your mouth there, Miriam. Uh, that I had to choose for her who she would be partners with, and she fell in love with Clank, who, whomst I chose. So, I, I guess this is maybe the game's way of kind of combining both of those storylines, that if they're so they're both missing? Maybe. From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Hit <laughs> hit, I'm flying. It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Broom battle arena? Broom cooking arena? That's interesting. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Oh! Ashley and Van Van put him in there. Pop, get down from there right now. Don't be mad at him. Even though you're the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life, don't be mad. Please. Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? Who am I to disagree? Sweet dreams are made of this. I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything, and we well, only now just noticed he was missing. Wow, unbelievable. I can't feel my leg. I can Who's saying that now? I can't feel my legs, may I be excused? Sure, you kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in Uskal history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second, pranks? Prank? Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature whir, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged. Oh yeah, he was gonna exp he, he, he threatened to bring about the robot apocalypse, and so Van Van, un or some, Ashley maybe, unplugged him and saved the world maybe? He was about to self-destruct? Ow, ow, I just bashed my hand against the table. So things are going pretty well for me. I guess we'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Has it? I don't know about that. I'm actually gonna take a break because I feel like we're at the end of this thing and I just need to catch my breath a little bit. There's a lot of dialogue and this voice for Sprinkles and Ashley and everybody, it's, it's hard. So be back in a jiff. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. <laughs> Miriam, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles in savory syrup. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny Naruto Maki I spy afloat in this itsy bitsy bowl? Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Why does she always make tiny little food? Does everybody make tiny little food? Or is that just her? Hmm, I don't know. Sprinkles carefully... That's not his voice. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Ew. Sublime. Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. I'll buy myself. I'm a great singer. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much, it was less than a thimble's worth of soup. Yeah, I should say so. A plus! Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed, she gives you a huge hug. Or a hug, a uh, huge hudge. I, he, Thank you, Link2, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now, describe your dish. I made uni over, uni? I don't know. Wow, it looks hard to eat. It looks painful. Positively ouchies. Over smooth egg custard in an extreme, in an axe-hewn urchin shell. Tapped with caviar. Did he, did he axe chop this thing? I think he did. Wow. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second, different colored type of urchin? <laughs> yes, Sprinkles! A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it! A bit much is kind of my brand! Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes! Didn't I say so? I did say so. 
He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof woof! Please be gentle with my cuisine! Grr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles! He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch my tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting! He's gonna die! Oh no! I can't eat this! It keeps poking my tongue! Disqualified! A stunning turn of events! Oops, no, that's not- <laughs> that's not the dog anymore. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving in a bowl made of needles couldn't make it difficult to eat? You know what, typically you don't actually eat the bowl. Unless it's the bread bowl, but this was not. Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount simplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me! Before forcing to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps to calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley. It's time to step up. Now, describe your dish. I made orange blossom. See, it flashed again. Why does it keep doing that? Orange blossom Turkish delight in light rose water syrup, topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That looks really cool, actually. Although, I don't know which part of it you're allowed to eat. Like, what's this red thing? Is that the syrup? Is that part of the glass? Is the hearts the glass? What can I eat? <laughs> I don't know. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. Mm. I'm gonna temporarily suspend both of these characters' voices because it's starting to hurt. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. Yeah, it's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the, don't eat the food out of cooking school. Got toast in your ears or something, Link 5? I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it too. I didn't realize they were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. Oh, the Kesh, Kesh, da da da. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. Yeah, see, that's, I, I knew it. I guess that part was edible. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley and she can finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. Back to the voice. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. I would honestly rather people be more like this, where they're, you know, obvious with their evilness instead of pretending to be nice. Don't know why. This isn't the last you've heard of me, either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. Okay. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. My voice needs a short break already again, so... Okay. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up to the streets. Together. No, sorry. Together. And what happens? Two chefs? What began as a bowl... Oh. What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese, that does look very good, has become has become something else. He examines it closely, sniff- Oh! Wait a second. I didn't know you were combining the two. Hold on. <laughs> I'm suddenly- I don't know that I'm into this. This- this- this might be a problem for me. What are these white lines on it? I don't know what this is, and it scares me. Hopefully it's not gravy, because that would be disgusting. <sighs> Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing, and completely blow me away. I'm 49 dog years of life. I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. Oh, okay, good. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Wow. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese ball. They all seem to transcend this reality. Wait, into another dimension. Okay. 
Things got weird. You win! Together you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. Great! The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Wow, this is the best possible ending. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment. To get their groove on. What is this, the end of Stranger Things season two? Also, it's the cafeteria. That's funny. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. Whoops. DJ, jo DJ Dog is in the house! Ow, ow, ow! You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Oh, you. Hey, they look a lot better now. Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did when they were the villains. They're good guys now. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. He's alive. He never died. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's the Spork Monster! He has totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here on out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork- Sorry, Party Monster. Ah, dejected student walks off. No, I kind of want him to have a good ending too. Come back, student. Oh. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking. And you know she's gonna do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? <laughs> it's Pop! He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched upon his dirty chef hat... A, a crown. Yeah, that's weird. Welcome back, Pop! I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so I had it mailed directly to your father. I figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, oh, now I get it. <laughs> and we get a new wing on the school. Not to mention the honor, the education, wait, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. <laughs> okay, good. He's a chancellor and a dean. Seems like a conflict of interest. The music of the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparkling and electric hissing. Uh-oh. Sparking. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that... Now that I have congratulate... Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. That's good. I am Clank, and I am not of this Earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. All right. What? Yeah, I should say so. What? Yeah, I should say so. I actually feel like I knew it this whole time. Really, what other ending could we have expected from Clank? Honestly, I don't really see any other way out of this one. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I have just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. <laughs> Whoops, I kicked the table and everything's going crazy. The, the idea of somebody saying, I don't know what to say, except no, obviously, is so funny to me that I have to stop and reflect on it. That is very good, and I love it to death. This game is great, I have to say. Wow. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are. Weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. All right, well, see ya. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. There we go. Howdy, classmates. Oh, I kind of I kind of missed the the suit look. He still looks good, don't get me wrong. I also like that he's got the pen in his pocket here, and he had it on his arm earlier. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal! Hey, it all looked, it's, it's all, it's, yes, this is it. You got the mash, you got the slaw, you got the bis, you got the chick. 
I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. Is that what this whole game has been about? Wait, it said the end, and now it says, no, it's not the end. What? W w did that just... That was weird. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Link 5, what are you doing sitting all alone? And what happened to the other four links? I feel like my memory's not really working out so well. Oh, you know, just waiting for the right bidder to ask me to dance. Oh, I see. Well then, I think I have a proposal that you might like to hear. Your heart begins to race. Is this the moment you've been waiting all semester for? This fall, when I opened my first original chicken, fried chicken restaurant. Colonel Sanders leans in close. He reaches into his coat pocket and retrieves something small. It fits snugly in the palm of his hand. As he speaks, he begins to extend his hand towards you. Yes. I want you to visit, and feel free to use this coupon for one complimentary side dish of your choosing. Plus a soda upgrade on me. Well, there's the drink then. Is that it? Is that it? Is that all she wrote? Is that what... Is that what this has all been leading up to? Really? Colonel Sanders places a single paper coupon in your hand. You notice that it ex expires at the end of the year. Gee, thanks. Don't be a stranger. The end. The, the end. The, e the end. What? Oh, come on, really? After all that? Oh my god. Wow. Wow. Alright. No, I don't want this. I don't want this anymore. I don't want to see this. Wow, everybody eating. That was cool, actually. This... No, I'm sad now. Now I'm sad. Well, cool, I guess. Well, guys, you know what? Thanks for watching. That was a disaster. I mean, overall, that was a great game. That was very funny. A lot, very charming. I liked it a lot. Okay, well, that's it, though. We got to the end. Not a good one, certainly. A terrible ending. But, um, hey, we did it. We played I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger-looking-good dating simulator. And it was. It truly was. So, thanks for watching, I guess. Tune in in two days for something else. God knows what. Who could follow that up? This has been an ungodly long episode, so I'm just going to end it. Thanks for watching. This game is one year old, so there we go. Love you, everybody. I love you, everybody. Bye. Wow. Wow.